Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free apple pecan muffins. And these are so fast and easy to make, although any kind of muffin really is fast and easy to make. Of course, I'll be using honey today. And the first thing that I'm going to do while I'm waiting for my pecans to toast in the oven is mix together my topping ingredients. And it's three ingredients. I've got two tablespoons of date sugar, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I think that whisk is too big. The original recipe for this, it calls for white sugar to be mixed with the cinnamon and nutmeg to sprinkle on top of the muffins. But I suppose you could use brown sugar or coconut sugar, but I really like the date sugar. And I really like dates with fruit and nuts. And for that matter, you don't have to put nuts in this muffin either. So I've got one apple here. And you can use your favorite apple. I would recommend going with kind of a firm, crunchy apple. But use what you've got. In fact, there's so many varieties of apples nowadays. And I like almost all of them. But I will say you don't want kind of a baking apple, something like a Red Delicious. That's a really soft apple that will kind of turn to mush in the oven. And then I'm just going smallish bite-sized pieces of my apples. And I think I might even go a little bit smaller than that. And the apple that I'm using today is a Cosmic Crisp, I think. But these muffins are really good with a honey crisp, a pink lady, even a Granny Smith. So I need one cup of apples. Keep an eye on your nuts that are toasting in the oven. I've got the oven preheated to 425, which is fine for toasting nuts, but they don't take very long at all. So keep an eye on them. And usually about the time that you can start smelling them, they're over toasted and probably burnt. So I've got just over a cup of chopped apple and that was almost all of my apple. So if you have a really small apple or a really large apple, make sure to not go over too much of just one cup. We don't want our muffins to be soggy. And then we can just eat this later. So now that my nuts are done toasting, I just need a half a cup of nuts. You could make this recipe with almonds or walnuts, whatever your favorite nut is. Or no nuts at all. And for that matter, you don't even have to put nuts in the batter of your muffin. You could just sprinkle nuts on top at the end with our little sugar topping. But I like them mixed in. And I probably won't use all of these nuts. That's more than a half a cup. I've got a greased muffin pan. I like to grease my muffin pan with bacon grease or butter. You could even line your muffin pan with cupcake liners if you wanted to. So for the dry ingredients, I've got two and a quarter cups of my gluten-free flour. I've got three and a half teaspoons of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And just mix this all together. My kitchen always stays really cold, so my butter at room temperature really isn't very room temperature. And crack my eggs while I'm waiting. So that looks perfect. It's starting to melt, but not totally melted yet. And you don't even have to use butter for this recipe. A lot of muffin recipes call for vegetable oil or shortening, which is vegetable oil in a solid state. I just like butter. So now that the butter is mostly creamed around there, I've got a quarter cup of honey. And you just want to cream your honey and your butter together. Okay. 
In goes my two eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. So once you've got that all mixed together, we're gonna alternate between our dry ingredients and one cup of milk. And I usually go in about three additions of flour and then two additions of milk. So we'll start with a third of our dry ingredients. Another third of our dry ingredients. and the rest of our milk. And then I like to switch to a spatula for the last addition of my dry ingredients. And once you've got most of the dry ingredients mixed in, you can still see a little bit here and there. I'm gonna dump in my one cup of apples and my toasted chopped pecans. And you know, I was aiming for a half cup of toasted chopped pecans, and I've got just that. That worked out pretty good. And then just mix in our apples and our pecans. And once you've got those all mixed together, bring over your muffin pan, and we wanna fill these about three quarters of the way full. And I usually start out by putting a little bit in each one and then going back and making sure they're all even. And I don't know about you, but it seems to me nowadays, muffins are so sweet, they're almost like a cupcake. I have really old cookbooks and the muffin recipes in those cookbooks are the traditional muffins that aren't full of sugar and all of that. So I really like just kind of a traditional standard muffin that has really good flavor, but isn't like eating a dessert. Because we have cupcakes for dessert. If I'm gonna have a cupcake, I'm gonna have a cupcake. Once you've got all of your batter in your muffin pan, bring over your sugar topping here. And here I just got done telling you I don't want a cupcake for my muffin. And I'm sprinkling a sugar mixture on top. But date sugar goes so well with fruit and nuts. And if you've never used date sugar before, you should, it's really delicious. And it works really good in recipes, but it's really powdery. And so it doesn't really, it doesn't dissolve like a regular sugar does. It won't be kind of like a caramely sugar topping. It will just add a little bit of sweetness and make our muffins delicious. So now these will go in the oven again at 425. I start checking at about 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes and a toothpick is coming out clean. I'm gonna let them rest in the pan for about 10 minutes and then put them on my cooling rack. If you guys could smell these, they smell amazing. It's been about 10 minutes and this is where we find out how well we greased our muffin pan. Oh. I've got a little apple coming out of the bottom here. I'll just stick that back in there. They look really dark. Now, if you notice, my muffin is actually golden brown, but where my date sugar is, it got a little bit darker when I sprinkle it on top. So don't worry, my muffins are not burnt, but they look burnt. Maybe I'm still getting used to my new oven. And that's actually where my muffins are sticking a little bit is on the sides where my date sugar is. I think they look a lot darker on camera than they do in person. Yeah, I really think they, they don't look that dark in person. But hey, if you do burn your muffin, it's okay. And I don't know if you noticed or not, 
but there are spots where my date sugar still looks a little bit dry and crumbly and I don't mind but it actually adds kind of a nice texture on top and they've been cooling for about 10 minutes I'm gonna eat one now while it's still warm this isn't like a loaf of bread where we need it to cool off before we eat it look at that you can see all my little bits of apples in here sure looks good still steaming a little bit these are absolutely delicious and this is the reason why you want to use kind of a crisp apple they get softer but they still have a little bit of crispness to them and you know that little bit of date sugar on top it just gives it a little bit of added sweetness without being overly sweet and my cinnamon and nutmeg in here you get just barely a hint but it adds just enough spice to the muffin and this is exactly what a muffin should be at least I think so it's a delicious little baked good that isn't like a dessert but so good and you know just that half a cup of pecans in there it really is the perfect amount these muffins go perfect with a cup of coffee or even a cup of hot chocolate if you like hot chocolate coffee for me but such a perfect addition to your breakfast you could eat one of these for lunch a great little snack on the go and the only thing that I think would make my muffins a little bit better is to put some butter on top other than that I think they're perfect let me know what you think if you make this recipe let me know what kind of apples you like to put inside your muffins but thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already if you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I'll see you on the next one.